market and market going for a walk and today I guess we're gonna walk this way because my car is this way and uh, I gotta walk this way so I don't know where exactly we're going this is considered old city Philadelphia this is where uh, you know America was founded and whatnot This is 2nd and uh, Market. We're going to be going towards 2nd and Chestnut Street. Um, wow, the street's open. Usually, they let the restaurants take over the whole street. That is the Continental. Uh, apparently, I think, I don't know if that's closing down or if it's getting a redo. take a shortcut <laughs> I said your restaurant was on the way in, in the way of my pavement this is uh, some really cool little back streets in this area um, Yeah, I probably have enough time. I'll show you that one cool street. I did a walking history tour two months ago. I'm going to be doing another one in September. Just waiting for the temperature to drop down a little bit. Uh, so if you were part of that walking history tour, I've showed you things that most tour guides don't even talk about because they don't even know about. Um, there's a mural. I don't know if I like this guy's stuff. He just paints a bunch of shit and writes stuff on the wall. I mean, it's cool. Like, that says Harry Callis, and that's Arctic Splash. It just, I don't know. It's, I, I, I don't like it. I, what do you think of that? It's official. I don't like that guy's murals. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not going to be able to show you this street. Well, maybe I will. We'll see if we can find it. This is the uh, Customs House of the United States. Um, if you look up there, that building was the inspiration to the building from uh, Ghostbusters. If you ever saw the part where the Ghostbusters fought the uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man in part one, kind of looks like that building. I saw that they're making another Ghostbuster movies. Movie, movie. How dare they? I think, I think they, if you ruin a franchise once, I think that's enough, Hollywood. I saw the girls, Ghostbuster. That's what we, I think that's what everybody calls it. Or the new Ghostbusters. Believe me, everybody calls it the girl Ghostbusters. It stinks. Not a good movie. I don't know why they did that. They just got everybody from Saturday Night Live, and they said, here, go be Ghostbusters. And they said, sure, we'll do that, no problem. We won't be as good as the other Ghostbusters. You know what? We'll go into the Second Bank of the United States. What do you think of that? We're going we're gonna to go in a building. We're going to see if we see David Washington. And then we're going to walk back to the car. Very exciting. This is the uh, Museum of the American Revolution. One of the newer museums in the city. Uh, definitely my favorite museum in this section of philadelphia there's a lot of museums and there's museums that you don't even know about there's the constitution center there's the science museum which is right across the street it's the history of science um there's uh carpenter's hall the ben franklin museum constitution center which isn't all that great um the second bank of the united states independence hall uh, the buildings all around Independence Hall. There's so many museums, but the best, the best museum. This is the best museum. And if you see up there where that American flag is, behind that American flag is a um, uh, an auditorium where once an hour they show this little five-minute movie of um, George Washington at Valley Forge. And at the end of the movie, they showed the actual tent 
that George Washington stayed in when he was in Valley Forge. It's really, I, I, I was in that museum two or three times. I, every time, I, every hour on the hours when they show it, and I, would ha I set the alarm on my phone, and I, uh, I would go every hour. It made me cry every time, too. It's a really beautiful presentation on how they do it. This is the first bank of the United States. Uh, the first time they ever used an American eagle on a federal building is right up there. Look at that. You see that eagle? That's the first time America ever used an eagle on a federal building. The movie Hamilton, the movie Hamilton, the musical Hamilton, right? Well, no, 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 no. Hold on. Alexander Hamilton got this building built, right? And then this building for 30, 40 years, it's just been a warehouse. Ain't nothing going on in this building. Just a warehouse. Well, because of that musical Hamilton being so popular, they're opening up this building very soon. It's going to be a museum again in 2026. That's when they're going to do the quadruple. So I don't know what the hell it's called. The 250th anniversary of America. See, people do the photographs here all the time for the weddings. So yeah, this whole building got redone. These are all new windows. This is the first time I've seen this building without uh, scaffolding. In a while. Pretty awesome. This spot here, if you ever come to Philadelphia, if you come behind the First Bank of the United States, these buildings, these little outhouse buildings, are used by the park rangers for storage or something. I don't know what they use it for. They don't really... But if you stay in here in the... You know, when the trees aren't alive, you can see a building that was built in the 2000s, which is that big silver tower, that big tower in the background. That's built in the 1700s. That building right there was built in the 1900s. You can see the second bank of the United States. That was built in the 1800s. 17, 18, 19, 2000s. I don't know how many spots you can stand in the um, in America and see four different centuries of architecture. I can't think. And maybe Boston... Possibly New York, maybe Florida. I don't think so. This is Carpenter's Hall. Let's go in here. Let's get ready to get ready to go and tie Carpenter's Hall. Mask up. Gotta go through the back door. Okay, no problem. See this here? This is a doorbell from uh, back in the day. Look at this. Listen. Yeah, see? That's a doorbell. And that's Flemish Bond. Uh-oh. Did we need to go in Carpenter's Hall? Yeah. There it is. That's Carpenter's Hall. That's where the uh, First Continental Congress met uh, to write a letter to King George saying, hey, would you stop taxing us, please? And uh, if you don't stop taxing us, we might do something. That's what the First Continental Congress said. And then King George didn't respond. He said, nah, I ain't gonna fuck you guys. You ain't doing shit to me. Pay your taxes. So then uh, we said, nah, we ain't gonna pay your taxes, you punk. How about uh, we go to war and we get our independence from you? And uh, I think that's how the Revolutionary War started. In case you were wondering. We're going to go into the uh, second bank of the United States. The first bank of the United States, uh, the charter ended in 1811, and there was no national debt. We didn't have any wars going on. We didn't really have, so 
the, 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 whoever the president at the time was said, oh, I think the banks could be run by the, the states. And then uh, we had this war. It, that happened in 1811. And then in 1812, we had this war called the, 18, the War of 1812. And we, we, we started getting another national debt. We got another debt going again. So we had to build another national bank. And that's why we have this. This is the second bank of the United States. It was only around for, I think, 20 years. Um, there was a big bank war with Andrew Jackson and the president of this bank, uh, Francis Biddle. Biddle was the last name. I always get it. So we're going to go in here. It's now a portrait gallery of... Uh, the founding father. Uh oh, they lose my hat. No, my sunglasses are right here. So it's now a portrait rally of the founding fathers. And uh, we're going to go inside. Let's do it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. There you go. Uh, okay, okay. There you go. All right. So this is the second bank of the United States. It's a portrait gallery. Hey, how you doing? And if you go in here, they have portraits of all the founding fathers. Uh, the majority of the paintings were painted by a guy named Charles Wilson Peel. This guy is Pastor William White. That's uh, Lafayette. There's a painting of William Penn, and that's Dr. Benjamin Rush, who has a school named after him in Philadelphia. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of schools in Philadelphia named after the men in this room. This is this is Nicholas Biddle. This was the guy who was the president of the bank. And this is Andrew Jackson. This is the president who didn't want banks to be run federally. He wanted them run by the states. So that this room tells you about the Great Bank War. And you go back here. Charles Wilson Peel, who was the portrait artist of the Founding Fathers, also owned, had a uh, museum on the second floor of Independence Hall where he had stuffed animals. And this is his stuffed animal, which was an, an eagle. Um, he had, you see this, this is a, a, a thing of his museum, a, a layout of his museum. It's all stuffed animals. The... Um, this is the only stuffed animal I think that remains because the other stuffed animals were in a museum owned by uh, P.T. Barnum. He bought all the stuffed animals from the museum that was on the second floor of Independence Hall. And Barnum had this big museum and there was a huge fire. And uh, the major everything was gone. Everything was gone. That's Bartram. He has a garden named after him in Philadelphia. David Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse Square. All these names mean something to people in Philadelphia and most of the people in America. John Adams, second president of the United States. He was president of the United States in uh, Philadelphia when Philadelphia was the, um, the capital. John Jay, this is the first Supreme Court uh, justice. He uh, ran the uh, Supreme Court here in Philadelphia, which was uh, the first Supreme Court, was uh, Philadelphia City Hall. And um, there you go, there you go, okay. And uh, the uh, Independence Hall was the state, state house, which is where the capital of Pennsylvania was up until, you know, we had to start becoming a nation. We needed a place for our federal government. So the entire federal government of the United States pretty much was on this one block from 1790 to 1800. Uh, the Supreme Court, the Senate, the Congress, all that right here. So I always think about this. It wouldn't have taken much to take out the entire American government you know, you could have came here and got the Senate and the Congress. George Washington only lived on the corner at Six and Market. So, 
I wonder. I mean, like, God. It's amazing that that didn't happen. What we're doing now is we're looking for my friend David Washington. He is a, uh, he sells tickets to these tour buses. Oh, I see him. I think I see him. No, that's not him. We're looking. We're just looking for David Washington. That's all. Oh, that's a woman. Oh, I gotta get back to the car. Uh oh! Don't hit me. I'm a, I'm a pedestrian. Oh, we can go in here. I'll go in. So this is um. We're going to go inside the first Supreme Court of the United States. Tourist tip. If you're coming to Philadelphia, it's hot. You want to you want to spot the cool down? There's a restaurant. There's a place across the street called The Force. You can sit there, get something to eat. Uh, or you can go in this building here, which is the first Supreme Court of the United States, the old city hall of Philadelphia. Uh, there's never anybody in here. It's also the gift shop of Independence Hall. Let's see, watch. Uh -oh. oh, it's closed. Uh oh. Yeah, so behind these doors was the uh, first Supreme Court of the United States. Huh. Isn't that funny? Ain't no way, uh... I love this part of Philadelphia. I have to, um... I have to physically be in this area once every few weeks. I just need to get the feel of the city and... Uh, I, I mean, the fact that this building here is right here, you know what I'm saying? Like, people, this stuff, this stuff is just background to the residents of Philadelphia. This stuff doesn't, you know, people travel all around the world to go inside that building. I would say, I bet you over 60% of the people who live in Philadelphia never go in that building unless they're at school trips. There's the Liberty Bell. There's the Liberty Bell right there. And we're going to look for David Washington here, and then we're going to zigzag back to the car, because I got two hours. I don't know how long I've been. Got it. Take a little drinky poo. Looking for David Washington. No David Washington. David Washington working today? <laughs> uh, yes, I believe so on the other side. On the other side? I didn't see him over there. Okay. All right. Well, if you see him, just tell him. Look, if you see him, tell him the Philly captain was looking for him. Yeah, he'll know what that is. Yeah, that, thanks. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Keeps me cool in important spots. All right, David. I was looking for you, buddy. They said you went home early. I saw David on Facebook earlier today, and he said, he, uh, 
He hopes he didn't get get sent home early. Uh oh, poor David. This is the world's biggest Wawa. In case you're wondering, can we go inside the world's biggest Wawa? Let's go inside the world's biggest Wawa. Here we go. Let's get a drink. This is a fun walk. We're going in places. All right. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Ice machine down. Oh no. We need a drink. This is what Wawa's really like. Their iced teas are the best. Um, they also have a dairy farm. I like the diet green tea. Uh-oh. It's just a lot of open space. It's not really that big. Just open space everywhere you look. World's biggest Wawa. If you want to get a sandwich, you touch here and you order, you touch the order, and you just get cold hoagies. No, never toast a hoagie. Get the Italian. You get provolone. So you just pick what you want in your sandwich. Wawa's. People, people love Wawa, and um, I know Wawa gave me a big ass gift basket <laughs> um, a few months ago on TV, or maybe a month ago on TV. Wawa, I did something with Flowrider, and Wawa was extremely happy of all the publicity I got them, so they gave me a big gift basket with probably like two hundred dollars of Wawa swag and uh, gift cards and coupons and t-shirts all kinds of stuff saying that Wawa is only a step above Subway I did a pre-interview for the TV show I did about the Flowrider interview when I was on NBC and they asked me they said how much do you love Wawa and I was brutally honest and I said hon if you went to a pizza shop and, they, and you ordered an Italian hoagie, and they gave you a Wawa hoagie, you spit right in their face, wouldn't you? And she said, yeah. So she goes, we want to ask you that question. We'll ask you about cheesesteaks. You hear that bell ringing? They do this thing where they tell stories. Um... And when they ring that bell, it means they're getting ready to tell a story. <sighs> oh, I can't be the only one watching the story, guys. I can't do that. By the way, that's the back of Independence Hall. The first Congress and Senate uh, were set, set, they met in this building. The, the term upper house and lower house is because of this building, the upper house is where the Senate met and the lower house is where the Congress met. And that's where that's why we call it the upper and lower houses. On July 4th, 7, uh, 19, 1776, back, this was the front door of Independence Hall, uh, John Nixon, who was the sheriff of Philadelphia, uh, came out on those steps and read the Declaration of Independence out loud. And guess what? When he read it out loud for the first time, he read it in German. That's right, the first time they, uh, oh, what's this, free twilight talk. Hmm. So they do this, 
Join a Twilight Guided every Thursday and Saturday for a talk on the history of independence. 505-525-545. dot uh, org for more information. Yeah, see, that guy, what he does is he'll tell you a story from back in the day. They still do that thing with the stickers and the merry-go-round? Nah? Not this time? Yeah. There's only three of us today. There's only three? Okay, yeah. yeah. There's one here, there's one at Professor Ross' house, and there's one at the IBC. Uh -huh. And you get a red and a white and a blue, you can go to the carousel to the Franklin Square and get a carousel. Oh, okay, okay, so that's how they do it now. All right, awesome, thanks. That's what you could do now. If you want to, if you get three, if you get to the three storytellers, you get three stickers. But believe me, that's a lot easier than it used to be. You used to have to get 13 stickers. Bullshit. Three stickers. And then you guys sit there and hear their story. Ugh. I did it with Jules. It's very, it's tough to sit through. I, I have anxiety issues. So I feel awkward in places where normal people wouldn't feel awkward. That's the American Philosophical Society. Founded by Benjamin Franklin. The uh, library system started there. It's still open. The, the, the journals of Lewis and Clark are uh, in there. They're stored. Uh, the, uh, I think the original negatives of the moon landing that, that might not be right, but yeah, I think that's something they have in there. It's not really a museum. It's like a, yeah. Uh, would you call it a museum? No, you couldn't call it a museum. You call it a, uh, I don't know. It's, a, it's American Philosophical Society. This is something they do. When they knock down, they tore down everything from back in 1776. There's not much left. So what they did is they had these brick outlines to show you where buildings were. And this is where the Secretary of the Navy was. That's a statue of Robert Morris. He uh, was one of the signers of the Constitution for the state of Pennsylvania. Ooh, that, that could be right. Wow, this smells so nice right here. I like to say that, because sometimes when I'm walking down other sections of the city, I'll tell you, it smells like shit. But when it smells nice, I like to say it, too. Oh, is this up? I don't think I ever really talked about this. These are bikes you can rent. And you can drive them for an hour. And some of the bikes have electric motors. Um, and you could have an electric motor bike and, and uh, drive it all around the city. And you just got to return it to one of the bike racks. And there's not many... Where I live, there are none of those bikes. I think they stop uh, in Fishtown. It's as far north as they go. There's probably some in South Philly. This is an original cobblestone street from Philadelphia. The street no longer exists. But the cobblestones do. And there's a curb. This is a really nice spot to sit in the springtime. Like the first nice day when it hits 80, nobody's in here. These are roses that were planted by the daughters of the American Revolution. Oh, is that right? There's a sign here. We'll, we'll figure it out. The signers of the United States Constitution, daughters of the American Revolution, 1987, they planted these rose garden, this rose garden. I believe some of these roses are from like Thomas Jefferson's estate or maybe George Mount Vernon. I don't know. And then, anyway, it's not... Yeah, whatever. I don't. I don't even know what the hell I'm saying right now. It's nice. It's just a park. Nobody gives a shit about who where the flowers came from. 
All right, we gotta get back to the car. I have two hours. This is the Magnolia Garden. The Magnolia Garden. George Washington, who lived in Philadelphia during his presidency, retained a lively interest in horticulture. Uh, although the Magnolia are, uh, uh, this is the garden. These are the garden that, uh, this is the George Washington Garden. Nineteen fifty nine. So these are the flowers George Washington liked to look at. I saw an episode of um what the hell's the name of that show? Pawn Stars? And uh Rick was getting ready to buy George Washington's suit. Um for I think it was like three million bucks and, and it was a pink suit and the, the guy who was selling it said George Washington liked to be very flamboyant the more color your, your suit had it kind of showed your power or your, your position in life I don't know it seems weird ah look at this a little brick wall this is the here's Flemish Bond this house has been getting worked on for a year or so. Or so. Uh, what is this house? The shipping house, right? The Windstar. Members of the philosophic Dr. Windstar upon his death. Uh, this is the, the Windstar house. Windstar was a great physician who devoted his life to scientific work. He preceded uh, Mr. Jefferson as the president of the American Philosophical Society. This is St. Mary's Church. Uh, St. Mary's uh, Cemetery. I wish the cemetery was open. I would love this. I would love to go in here. First, the, the first plot has my last name on it. And uh, yeah, one day I'm just going to hop this fence. Um, I think Commodore Barry is buried in this bridge uh, in here. Uh, yeah, John Barry, he's buried here. And um, a old uh, furniture maker, guy used to make wood furniture. His name was, I think it was Joseph Bouvier, not Joseph Bouvier. Uh, Onassis, no, no, Onassis. The hell was Jackie Kennedy's maiden name? Anyway, this guy made furniture. And... Uh, He made a a, be, a a desk for the King of Spain. The King of Spain lived in Philadelphia, or the former King of Spain lived in Philadelphia, Joseph Bonaparte, Napoleon's brother. Uh, I think it was 1815 to 1817. He had to stay here for a little bit. And uh, what the hell is this little thing? Um, he had a desk made by, by uh, Jackie Onassis' great-grandfather, Jack, Jackie Onassis was married. That's her name. Is that Onassis? No, I think that's the second guy he married. Goddamn Bouvier. I think it's Bouvier. Oh, this is the uh, Powell House. Samuel Powell was the former mayor of Philadelphia. His wife, I, Elizabeth Powell, she is the reason why George Washington ran for a second term for president of the United States. She, he got talked into it. In that house, you can now rent it out for a party space, but that was where they, uh, the former mayor of Philadelphia, Samuel Powell, lived. Oh, that squirrel's going nuts! Oh, now he's done. This is a nice little spot. Hmm. I guess it's like a little porch. Hmm. 
Oh, that's interesting. There's an, a lot of nice little yards in this section. Okay, St. Peter's Way. There's some Flemish Bon across the street. Bingham Court. Go down this other alleyway. I talk to you, I talk to Nora, I'm you know. I'm just waiting to see. She's a block away from me now and I can still hear her. <laughs> this playground, um, it's like in the middle of like this section, it's like a hidden little playground. But the, the coolest thing about this playground is there are black squirrels in this area and there's not many black squirrels in this in the state of pennsylvania that's what the guy who told me about the black squirrel said three bears park the residential neighborhood, so be considerate. This is what it's called, Three Bears Park. What do we got going on here? Uh-oh. What are these goofballs doing? I don't know what that is, but that's there. Regulators, mask up. Well, that's a lot of people. What have we got going on? We got like a concert. Uh oh. We're going into St. Peter Cemetery. This is a. Uh, this is one of the uh, more amazing cemeteries in the city of Philadelphia. They uh, they do have an audio tour that you can take if you want to walk around. Hey, hey, how you doing? I always want to see you in here. It's for you looking. That's an old pine looking church. Okay. I'm gonna walk it. Yeah, see. Pretty cool. This guy is George Mifflin Dallas. He was the fourteenth vice president in the United States. And the city of Dallas is named after him. And there are some great people buried right here in this cemetery. We got Dr. Benjamin Rush. We saw his painting in the portrait gallery early, earlier. He's buried, I think he's buried right here. Oh, Benjamin Chu. Benjamin Chu. Where's, oh, Dr. Rush is in another cemetery. Uh, John Nixon. We were just talking about him. John Nixon is the guy who read the uh, Declaration of Independence for the very first time. He was the guy who read it. Benjamin Rush. This guy here. See the steeple of the church? He paid for the steeple. That's why his headstone's shaped like the steeple. Oh, there's more people. And uh, buried back there is Charles Wilson Peel when we were in that second bank of the United States. 
Um, most of the portraits in that portrait gallery were painted by Charles Wilson Peale, who's buried in the cemetery. here. All right. We're getting near South Street. My car is past South Street. No, I will walk down South. Oh, this street's nice. No, we're going to walk down this street. Fuck South Street. If you want to see South Street, I've made a few videos on South Street. Watch uh, St. Patrick's Day. I spent St. Patrick's Day on South Street. It's Top five, my favorite videos. It's so much fun. I, uh, I, I just meet the strangest people. There's a guy smoking pot, carrying a rooster. Uh, there's some man who just, who, I don't know why he looks at me. He thinks I can pick up women. He keeps asking me where he can get laid at. Uh, I eat a Philadelphia taco, which is Lorenzo's pizza and a Jim's tea cheesesteak. You put them together, you make a Philadelphia taco, you eat that. It's a really fun video. South Street's a really, uh... South Street used to be a fun street. It's, it's, and now it's just like corporate cell phone stores and... Look at these houses. Uh, and I made a video about this section of Philadelphia, this part. I guess this is considered Society Hill. Um, if you want to learn about the history of these buildings and 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 uh i i it's i that last year i made a lot of videos um i think like 20 talking about the history of philadelphia um going around the buildings telling you about the buildings uh there's a big part of my pandemic i just engulfed myself engulfed is that the right term I, uh, in, in, in drench? No, that's not the word. I, I just, I just spent that whole year just learning about the history, learning about the history of my city. Um, I wanted to be a tour guide two years ago. Three years ago. Holy shit. Three years ago, I wanted to be a tour guide. I quit my, I quit a job. Like a real job, like an adult job. I quit. And uh, I, I spent a month, I had a little bit of money saved up, and I spent a month in uh, Old City, Philadelphia, learning everything I can about every single building I could, and I still didn't get the job. The uh, tour guide company said I was a little too Philly. They like to have a, a more serious approach. Tourists like to see something. They don't want to have a Philly guy. They want to have a professor teach them about the stuff around the city of Philadelphia. And uh, the guy who owned that tour company, uh, I don't think they're from Philadelphia. So, fuck them. I actually did my own tour last month. So, uh, that, that's something I do. If somebody tells me I can't do something, uh, I, I, get, I just fucking do it anyway sometimes. Uh, I did it. I hosted a trivia night uh, this week on Wednesday night. I hosted my first trivia night, and the reason I did that was because uh, a Quizzo company said I wasn't a good fit for them to be a Quizzo host. So I started pretty much. I started my own Quizzo company. Holy shit! So do me a favor. Tell me I can't do something, and I'm gonna go do it. Prove you wrong. And I'm gonna probably wear a kilt doing it too. What do you think of that? Because I did the tour guide, I wore a kilt, and when I did trivia night, I wore a kilt. Paddy wax. I started a riot there. Started a riot there. I know I say it every time I walk by it. There's the South Street Diner. Went there with my Aunt Joan after we sold the movie Schindler's List. I don't know why I remember that, but... My Aunt Joan used to take me to the movies when I was a kid. Very nice of her. She always takes me to go see... I don't know, she would take me like once every year or so to go see a movie, maybe every six months. And uh, we went to uh, see Schindler's List one time. 
and we went to that diner. That's, I can remember every movie I saw in the movie theaters. Um, and I, can, I can almost, I pretty, I think I can tell you what movie theater I saw it in. Very weird. And I used to go to the movies a lot, so it's not like I went to the movies like six times. I probably went to the movies, God. Um, I probably went to the movies once a month. And I can, I can even remember who I went to the movies. It's weird. Isn't that weird? Uh-oh. You got a ticket and another ticket. Why, well, you got two tickets. What'd you do, you asshole? You get two hours to park here. That's what I'm afraid. Will I, oh, this is going to be a fun game. Will we get a ticket? Won't he get a ticket? Everybody's talking about it. Last time we played this game, I did get a ticket. Now, the spot I'm in doesn't have meter parking. You just have timed parking. So you have two hours. So I don't know how long I've been. Um, in the last, since I've been to the car, I, I did a tour of a museum. Uh, we went, <laughs> oh, I got a ticket. Fuck. Oh, I hope not. Maybe not. We'll see. And this is why I hate parking around here. Because I always... Two hours. Okay. I don't think I got a ticket. I don't think I got a ticket. Maybe... No, I don't have a ticket. Huzzah! That's what Ben Franklin would say. Huzzah! Victory! We walked around Center City, Philadelphia for a few hours, and we didn't get a ticket. Suck my blank, parking authority. Well, if you like this video, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up, and while you're at it, hit subscribe. Don't forget to check out my merch. My merch is fire. And if you really want to help me out, there's a link below in every video to my Patreon. But don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I'll sail with you later. Look, I didn't even lock my door. Doodles!